<clears throat> Good morning and welcome everybody. So uh, we are ready to start our presentation. So thank you everyone for joining us as we uh, talk about our Trailhead support experience build uh, journey. Uh, my name is Praveen Kurana and uh, I'm one of the presenters. Uh, I'm a senior director of technical operations. Hi, my name is Kari Lucio. I'm the senior manager of Trailhead support and credential operations. So before we proceed forward, a uh, reminder to everyone, please make sure you uh, make your purchasing decisions based on the publicly available products and features. So uh, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, today's presentation is not a typical framework of best practices of how to implement Service Cloud. What are we actually sharing with you is our own personal journey and how we uh, got about implementing uh, support experience for Trailhead uh, using both Service Cloud as well as Einstein Bot. So we'll talk about the business challenge, which was uh, in front of us about a year ago, and uh, how our journey was, like how we started, where we ended, where we are today, and uh, what were our lessons learned, which would be our key takeaways, which we'll share with you. So uh, about a year ago, uh, where we were, we'll talk about that. But let's go back uh, in, in, in the past. Uh, when the Trailhead product actually came to life a few years ago, uh, the focus was primarily speed of implementation. Uh, we wanted to get the product built, make it available to our trailblazers, provide a fun experience to our trailblazers. But as the, the, in fact, the inflow of our trailblazers kind of exploded, uh, what we realized that the expectation from the product also changed. Uh, the experience our trailblazers were looking for was timely, help, self-help, and not having to wait for somebody to get back to them maybe in a few days or a week later. But so we started looking at this, like how we can make the experience better. So the first thing we wanted to focus on was uh, self-help experience for our trailblazers where they can find the answers to the questions uh, easily on their own and don't have to wait for somebody investigating and getting back to them after a week. In order to enable that, we also needed a scalable infrastructure, which we can build and continuously improve on top of it. And finally, uh, to understand where we were, what the problem was, what the type of problem was, what the scale of the problem was, we needed business insights. For that, we needed data, uh, both for understanding the current state and also for the continuous improvement. So these were the three things we started focusing on. Some of you may recognize this feedback form if you've been a trailblazer with us for some time. When you were in a module and you were having a problem, the only way to contact support was through a feedback form that did not capture the true essence of what your issue was or what your question was. And then when the team received it, we didn't have the information to really resolve the issue right away for you. So this was not an ideal experience for any of our trailblazers. So where we were about a year ago and how we started this journey of improving the support experience. So we, we spent a lot of time understanding uh, what the pain points were, both internally and externally. So we interviewed our stakeholders. We actually uh, looked at all the processes end to end. And we looked at the pain points from both our customer's perspective as well as internally operations and systems perspective. And we actually, uh, summarize that as our business opportunities to improve on. So we, we actually came up with like long list, but the key uh, bullets there were like that we needed a self-service portal. We needed a knowledge base to feed that self-service portal. And for solid knowledge base, you needed a content strategy. And we also needed a global coverage where we can meet SLAs uh, and meet the expectations of our customers. And in order to support all that, we needed uh, metrics. So we took all that, and we analyzed, went back to our stakeholders, uh, re-interviewed them, and made sure our understanding of the business opportunities and how we understood the pain points, we are aligned, so that we can come up with a plan to move forward. And that helped us uh, to start working on the plan. What happened? So uh, solution plan, we, as we started working on, we looked at all the opportunities and we started prioritizing them. And we came up with both short-term plan and the long-term plan. Uh, obviously, when you are 
starting an implementation, you don't want to wait for nine months or 12 months to uh, bring something to the market. So we said, what are our quick wins? We looked at the first thing we need is a solid foundation. So we worked on service cloud implementation with the help portal. And we said, once we have the foundation, once we have the data, we'll start looking at uh, what is going to be our path forward, which is like future phases. And we took that plan to our leadership, to our stakeholders, got an agreement on the plan, and so that we can start our journey, which was a phased manner implementation. And Kari is going to talk about the phase one. Yeah, let's dive a little deeper and go into our phase one service cloud implementation. So like Praveen just said, we knew we needed to lay a foundation for service cloud. We needed a stable and scalable environment so that we can support our trailblazers the best ability we can. We also know we didn't really have quality of reporting before, so that was a big important aspect of this first phase, was to have that, that tracking and reporting to assess the, the effectiveness of our state of support. So once we knew that that was our goal, we could then come with our stakeholders and agree upon a scope. So just like Praveen was talking about when they were planning the whole overarching project, we needed to make sure with this specific goal, we had an agreement with our stakeholders and our leadership of what we would include and what would be our vision. And then once we came to an agreement, we could get specific and build out those business requirements. And it's really important here is to prioritize. We really had to go in and figure out what was a must have, what was a nice to have. So as the project is going through, if any issues come up, we could reprioritize and adjust accordingly. And then we needed to identify how we're going to measure success after we launch. How are we going to know that we're really making an impact on our trailblazers and supporting them? And how can we make sure our team is productive in their work? So we identified those metrics that we would use. And once we all had that ready to go, we were able to form our team. And we found working with implementation experts who really know the service cloud was key to our success. They were able to provide us feedback on our requirements, if we had gaps in our requirements, and also uh, best practices. We also worked with uh, all the other teams at Trailhead that would have to be involved with this product, or with this project, like our product and engineering team or our marketing team. We gave them a heads up of what was expected of them and made sure they were aware of their involvement that they'd have in the project. And then we're able to execute. So the implementation experts took it over from here. But it was really important that we stayed involved with them. We met with them on a daily basis. We were able to answer any questions they had. They were able to demo the features to us as they were being developed. We could give feedback. We would iterate. And it was really working together as a team. We'd also, it's really important to test the end-to-end -end solution, making sure everything is working as you anticipate it to. And then also go back to your stakeholders. Give them demos. Give them updates of how it's unfolding so that everyone is aware of the project and how it's going to look in the end. And then we're able to launch, which is really exciting. If you remember those success metrics that we talked about, we're now able to reference those to see how the project is doing, how our trailblazers is getting support, and how our team's productivity is improving with the new solution. Thank you, Kari. And that solid foundation of uh, Service Cloud and to be able to uh, provide a portal to our customers and start collecting the data helped us to figure out how big the problem was, what was the scale of issue, uh, what type of uh, questions or queries we were getting from our customers. And that helped us to come up with a plan for the future phases. And we focused on the value add for our next phase in terms of now we, we had a way for our customers to reach out to us, submit a case, look at the knowledge base. We said, how can we make it much more easier? How can we enable self-service? How can we uh, provide answers to questions uh, by minimal clicks as possible. And that actually was the foundation for our vision for the next phase, where we focused on the value add, like what we can add on top of what we already implemented in the uh, past phase or the phase one, and, and continue to improve on top of it. And wh why, the, why the customers would uh, care about it, what is important for them, what are they looking for, how we can make that experience best possible. So that was our focus for this phase. And we started looking at the scope of that. Uh, so we actually identified the scope as, like, we need to make it uh, the, the experience as best as possible, need to provide them more of a context-based help. Like, if you are on a specific module and you need help, uh, providing resources to that specific module or that specific page, and you don't have to go and look for all the knowledge articles to figure out what the answers are going to be. And also, make it more conversational. Uh, if somebody is having question about, hey, what? 
uh, that I completed this certification, what is the next step? Or am I current on my certification? Where should I go to find what do I need to do next? So we needed some data dip scenarios where we can go in, look at the data for that particular user and make it more personalized. Uh, and answer those questions by simple clicks, by maybe uh, just user-friendly conversations. So we started looking at Einstein Bot. Uh, Einstein Bot uh, is a new product for Salesforce, came about a year ago. And we started understanding what are the features and functionalities of uh, the, uh, and what is the roadmap for the product is, so that we can see if it is aligned with what we want to deliver. And we partnered with the team, uh, our product team, very closely. And that was forming the right team. So it was, for this particular phase, not only was it important to work with the right implementation uh, experts and, and our stakeholders, but also continuous engagement with the product team so that we understand where the product is going. And based on the features which are available to us and are going to be available in the future, we can plan to continuously improve it. And the other thing which was very important for this phase was continuous improvement. So implementing, sharing with our stakeholders, uh, getting that feedback, learning from it, and then improving. So we did this multiple times. We did multiple POCs so that we can understand the product better, and we can also share with our stakeholders and get that feedback and uh, uh, learn from it and improve from it. Is it aligned with our goals? Is it aligned with our expectation? What we need to do differently? So that iterative execution was very important for us. So we did multiple POCs and demos so that we can improve on it. And finally, uh, as we were ready to launch it, what we did was we decided to go for a pilot. Uh, so we did a three-week pilot, reached out to about 500 of our customers, both internal and external, and we got tons of feedback. So right now, uh, because of the feedback we got, we just finished our pilots two, two weeks ago. So we are actually incorporating all that feedback and getting ready for uh, GA uh, in, a, in a month's time uh, so that uh, we can take the product which we pr uh, presented as part of the pilot, gotten the feedback, and make it available to our real business. So remember, we had our lovely feedback form <laughs> from before. And let me show you where we are today. So um, here's our new our help site that launched last year. And then here's a sneak peek of what the bot will look like uh, in on the help site. And I'm actually going to jump over and demo it live for you right now. So to kind of show you some of the, uh, the features we've added to the help site, let's say you're in a, a module, and this is data security. And you have a question or issue about the module or the challenge. We have our question, feedback, or help on the right side of every module and trailhead. When you click on that, it will open up our help site. And it'll rec whenever you enter a help site, you'll always have the option to search for the knowledge base. And if we have existing knowledge articles that are tied to from where you came from, so in this case, it was a data security module, we have recommendations just for you to help you find answers to your questions faster. And you might have noticed that on the right here is our I'm here to help, which is our Einstein bot. So let me open this up and show you some more of the bot. Now, I'm logged in. I'm a certified administrator. So the bot knows who I am and knows what certifications I have, and I want to know what do I have to do to maintain my credential? I can't remember when my next maintenance is due, so I want to look that up. So I'm gonna, we have the option to look into trailhead information, credentials, also to check your case status that you have open with our team. I'm going to go down and check my credential. And then it's going to give me a choice between um, earning a new certification or an existing. Obviously, I want to get information on my existing cert. And then it's going to tell me right away the status of my certification. And it says that I need to maintain. And OK, that's exactly what I want to know. I have something to do to maintain my cert. And it's telling me right now that I have the administrator spring 19 due August 23rd. OK, good. I have two months left. I'm good to go. I'm not going to expire tomorrow. That's great. And I can click on this to get more information. It's going to give me a link directly to the module. It's going to tell me more information that I need to know about my maintenance. And it's also going to ask me if I want to check any of my other certs. Well, I'm only an admin, so I have nothing else to check. And then it's going to offer to send me all this information in the email so I don't have to memorize it right now, and I can go back and check my inbox when I'm ready. So that's just one use case that we wanted to show you of how the bot is going to be useful to our trailblazers. And like Praveen said, 
This is not available to the public at the moment. It will be GA soon. But the help site, please go check it out and use it as you're going through your trailhead experience. Thank you, Kari. So back to our journey. Uh, so we walked you through both the phases, of phase one and phase two. And uh, right now, we are working on incorporating all the feedback we received uh, from the pilot. So now we, we will share with you what were our uh, lessons learned uh, from this journey and what the key takeaways are. And hopefully, you will be able to take some of those back uh, to your organization. So the first thing we uh, learned from this was uh, putting your customer first. So making sure. Uh, your customer is always top of your mind. So when you're working on a complex project, you get multiple inputs. You have tons of ideas. It's very easy to get bogged down. But having the customer experience top of your mind, making sure you understand the problems they are reaching out to you for, making sure their experience uh, is, is top of your mind and for your team and your stakeholders, and that is the key to success for you. Also, make sure you have stakeholder alignment on your vision and scope. If you recall, every phase of our project, we identified that vision, agreed upon our goals with all of our leadership at the beginning. And that was really key to success because there were no surprises at the end. Everybody knew what to expect. We kept everyone um, aligned and had agreement at the very beginning. Another one is defining and measuring success. So uh, from the start of the projects, in fact, both the phases, we were very clear what is our definition of success. Uh, and we made sure, uh, not just us, our teams, our stakeholders, our customers, we all were aligned on what that success means. And that helped keep, keep us focused on the final outcomes. And as we were going through it, we continuously measured it. We looked at, like, are we marching towards the right goal? Um, and that, in fact, as the continuous measurement also helped us that from both the timeliness perspective as well as the quality perspective of the project. So that is very important. And building the right team. This was really a pivotal point in our project to make sure we had the right resources, the right experts helping us at the appropriate times. They really advise, you know, we're not experts on every aspect of the service cloud or Einstein bot. So having the right experts involved was really critical. They provided feedback on our requirements. Did we have the right requirements? Did we think everything through all the way? And they identified those gaps, and they provided best practices and helped us problem solve as the project was unfolding. And finally, uh, plan to iterate and improve. Uh, we can't emphasize enough on this. Uh, from the beginning of the project, we made sure we are uh, open to and planning to continuously iterate. Uh, Plan to do multiple POCs, plan to do demos, and make sure before you actually take the product to public, uh, it, you go through the pilot, collect the feedback, uh, and incorporate it before you, before you move forward. So with that, uh, we would like to share some of the additional resources and next steps. Uh, you can go to our Success Hub, and there is a nice article on how to build great support experience. And we have uh, lots of trails and modules on Trailhead on both Service Cloud and Einstein Bot. And there's actually another session uh, at TDX uh, for how you can create Einstein Bot in 10 easy steps. So make sure you check that out as well. And with that, uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us. And hopefully, uh, you learned a uh, few tips from our takeaways and our learnings. And they will be here if uh, anybody has any questions. Thank you. Thank you.